what is going on welcome back to the wild podcast i am your host jeffrey zamore uh thank you again for taking the time to watch this video i truly 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 appreciate it once you have a moment please make sure that you hit that like button hit that subscribe button hit that alert button so you can stay up to date on all the new latest episodes also as well i also started a new channel and the channel's called Words of Wisdom Prayer. Words of Wisdom Prayer. I will leave a link below so you can actually just click on the link and go straight to the channel. That channel is actually dedicated strictly just for prayers. Um, my wife actually gave me the idea. She was like, hey, won't you start a channel where it's just strictly dedicated to prayers? Because we all need prayers. We all need prayers. And, you know, the channel still doesn't have a lot of prayers yet. but we got some couple of few prayers in there. I did a prayer on spiritual warfare, another one on faith, another one on healing. So there's a couple of prayers that's there. So please be on the lookout for that. Once you get a chance, check out that channel if you like it as well. As well, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well so you can stay up to date on all the latest prayers. I'm gonna do everything that I can to drop a prayer at least once a week, hopefully twice a week. Maybe even more than that. We'll just see how much time that I have because it, it it takes time doing this. It does. It does. And there's a lot of things that I also have going on in my own personal life. Good things. Really, really good things. But I don't want to stretch myself out too thin. So I want to get a conversation called Sin is Expensive. Today's episode is called Sin is Expensive. And this is an episode where that I've been sitting on for a while. And the reason why is because I first heard that expression or this phrase called sin is expensive. And when I first heard it, and I heard it through a pastor who was doing Bible study and he was going in and, and, and talking about the book of um, second Samuels. And while he was going over the book of Samuels, second Samuels to be exact, he mentioned that phrase sin is, sin is expensive. And I was like, Whoa, I really like that. And it's it's true. When we commit a sin, we don't realize how much it can cost us. It's very expensive. It, it, it's it's one of those things where, especially in this world, the world that we live in, and this has been going on since the beginning of time, but I feel like as time has gone on, we see how much the decisions that we make, we do not want to take accountability for the decisions that we make. We don't want to deal with the consequences. You know, we live in a society where it's YOLO. You only live once, live your life, do what you want without understanding that there are consequences to the decisions that you make. So you got to be careful on when you are out living your life, that if it's anything that is outside of the will of God, it's going to be looked at as sin. Even if it's something where we feel like, well, it's not that serious, it's not that deep, but there are consequences that comes along with it. There are a lot of things that goes on in the spiritual realm that we do not realize that does take place, right? Remember, there's always a battle between God and Satan, God and Satan. And when we commit sins, we are reflecting what Satan wants us to do. And a lot of that is based off of our flesh, right? I, I speak on the flesh a lot because it's either you could be guided by your flesh or you could be guided by the Holy Spirit. It's, it's either one of the two. When you've been saved, you are guided by the Holy Spirit. We live through the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. We are a new creation. But what happens is, is that there's going to be a internal struggle between our flesh and between the Holy Spirit. We're supposed to yield to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is always going to be there to guide us. I, I like to compare the Holy Spirit to a GPS. Most of us use a GPS, especially if you drive. Most of us use a GPS. I know I use it pretty much almost every day, especially when I get, you know, if I'm going a long distance drive or just even somewhere local. Even if I know where I'm going, I like to use a GPS. The reason why is because I like to one know, understand what the flow of traffic is, how long it's going to take me to get to my destination. Because living where I live at, especially traffic is crazy and it varies all the time. It doesn't really matter what time of day you could 
run into traffic at any given moment and then that's it. And so I like to always get an idea how long it's going to take me to get there. And also too, most of the time in most places that we may go to, especially if it's anywhere that's three to four, maybe five miles outside of where we're going or the direction that we're going, anything more than five miles, basically not at 10 times, it's probably more than one way to get there. Some, you know, one way may be more preferred because it's quicker, less miles. Another way may be a little bit longer. It's going to take us a little bit longer, but it just depends. So I like to see the comparison because there's been times where I'm like, okay, I'm heading to church for an example, and I'm getting my car and the, the normal route that I normally like to take, the GPS is routing me to go a different direction. This actually happened to me this past Sunday. Normally I would take, I, I, I go to church in Queens. I live in Jersey, about 20 minutes outside the city. And normally I would take a certain route, which normally would be cutting through Elizabeth to the Verrazano Bridge, which is, leads me to Staten Island or going to Staten Island to the Verrazano Bridge to Brooklyn and to Queens. That's the route that I normally would take. But last Sunday, which every now and then this happens, the GPS routed me to go a different direction, which actually had me going through the the direction going to the GW, which is the George Washington Bridge, which is going to have me cut through the Bronx. Um, and then it's going to have me cut through Queens and then get to where I need to go to my church. And I'm looking, I'm like, why is it's doing it? And I use Waze a lot. Waze is the GPS that I use a lot. And one of the reasons I like Waze is because one lets you know where police are at, just in case you're speeding. <laughs> but also, too, it gives you the option. There's an option called route. And when you click on it, and what's going to do is going to give you three different options of which routes that you prefer to take. And it tells you how long it's going to take you to get there. And that's what I did. And I saw that the route or the direction that I normally take was going to take much longer, about 10 to 15 minutes longer. And I usually have to get to church a little bit early because I got to help set up. And, and so far, I have certain responsibility that requires me to be there before service starts. And so it's very important that I get there on time. And so I was like, oh, okay. If I would have just ignored the GPS and it decided to go where the direction that I normally go, I would have been late. I would have been late by 15, 20 minutes or maybe gotten there 15 minutes later than I wanted to. And I was already running a little bit behind schedule, but that's how the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit is there to guide us on the direction that we need to go. And so we should always yield to that and trust in that. So even if we think that we know more than the Holy Spirit, sometimes we feel like our flesh is there because like, yo, YOLO, I've done this before. I've, I've gone this way before many times. Nothing has ever happened. I'm good. It can be that one time where the Holy Spirit is trying to guide us like, hey, I need you to go this direction or I need you to make this decision but we, ref but we refuse because we're so used to kind of doing things on our own because we feel our flesh is going to make us feel like we know more or know better. This is where we there's a delay. This is where we run into problems. This is where we run into issues because the reason why I couldn't go the normal direction that I normally would go is because there was an accident, which would have delayed everything. You get what I'm saying? So it, it's super important to you to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is like our GPS. It knows where there's traffic or where there's going to be an issue or there's going to be a hazard. Anything that's going to prevent us or stop us from living the life that we need to live before we even see it or even without us seeing it. Because there's a lot that goes on within the spiritual realm that we do not see. Remember, we don't battle against flesh and blood. So we have to be very careful on the decisions that we make. Again, sin is expensive. There was another quote that I heard that I thought was really phenomenal. Or it, it blew my mind. I've personally never heard this quote before. And this was a quote from Daryl Strawberry. And he said that you can choose your sin, but you can't choose your consequences. I'm going to repeat that again. You can choose your sin but you cannot choose your consequences. And that's the part where a lot of us 
don't often realize because we want to make decisions or live a life and not understand that we don't have the choice on the consequences that comes along with the decisions that we make. And we see we li- the world that we live in now wants us to downplay sin. The world that we live in now wants us to act like sin does not exist or that it's really not that serious. It wants us to normalize sin but the reality is this is a trick from satan this is what satan does he likes to normalize what god has deemed to be sacred like sex for an example and i'm not saying there's nothing wrong with sex but sex was designed between husband and wife man and woman that's what sex was designed for and of course, I, I'm I'm going to be quite honest. If we, I'm transparent here in the Words of Wisdom podcast, the Wild podcast, did I have sex before I got married? Of course I did. I'm not even going to lie. I'm being quite honest, I definitely did, especially before I got saved, definitely was. But when I got into my relationship with God and understood the reason why, because even when I, I knew it, but I didn't really see the big deal of it, which a lot of us don't. But it's not until you realize and you start really walking with God and understanding the reason why. So this is why it's so important to have a relationship with God. And what I mean having a relationship to know who he is, because when you know who he is, you understand his words. You understand why he says certain things in the Bible. Why when you read the Bible, when you read the word, because faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God, right? Your faith is going to increase because you're trusting what you're reading and you see it manifest which means it's also going to make you understand scripture, the context of scripture. You understand, okay, this is why God says, don't do this. This is why God says, don't do that. This is why God says to have this type of heart. This is the reason why God has created certain laws. This is the reason why Jesus had to come and die for our sins. You start to understand these stories and the reason behind these stories, because again, there are consequences for the decision that we make. Sin is expensive. We can choose our sin, but we cannot choose the consequences. And so the more I understood that, I was like, okay, now I understand why God and why he's so big on sex before marriage. Because if we decide to have sex before marriage or we're just randomly out there just doing it, there are consequences. Unwanted pregnancies, diseases, STDs, there's soul ties. There's so much that comes to play. Feeling used, maybe feeling abused, giving yourself up to somebody that you thought that love you, that you want to spend the rest of your life with. And you realize it's like, man, this person just wanted to get theirs and go about their business. Or it could be the other way around. It could be where it's like, hey, you know what? I'm I'm out here. And I know I was taught this. Like, yo, live your life. Test drive the car before you take it out the lot. But then you're not realizing it's like, yo, you putting yourself at risk and the stories that I've seen and the stories that I know from people that I know personally, where now there's again, an unwanted pregnancy or it's like, dang, I I, I got burned. Quote an STD or I'm with somebody or I slept with somebody who now does not want to leave me alone. This was supposed to be a one night stand or this was supposed to be just be a fling. But now it's turning to a life time of misery. But this the reason why is because you can choose your sin, but you cannot choose the consequence that comes along with it. Now, sin was first introduced to us by, you know, the famous story between Adam and Eve. Right. So God created Adam, then he created Eve. And when God first created Adam, he gave Adam dominion over this world, right? The Bible says that when Adam was created, God gave him dominion. Adam was the one who named every single animal that God created. But Adam and Eve only had one instruction, really was not to eat off of this, off of this tree. There was, a, there was a tree that was placed in the Garden of Eden 
And God said, do not eat off of this tree. You can have everything else. Everything else is yours. So you see how God could give us everything. He's like, I I've given you access to this. I bless you with this. I've given you favor with this. All of this is yours. I'm just requesting for you not to have one thing. But look how ironic the one thing that God tells them not to touch, they get tempted. And this is oh, this is something that happens even personally in our own lives where the one thing that God says is sacred, do not touch or to leave alone, or you should not mess with this. That's the very thing that we struggle with. That's the very thing where we become tempted with. And then what happens is the enemy comes in. And in this particular story, the serpent comes in and he starts to tempt Eve, which leads to Eve to eating the fruit off the tree, which also led to Adam doing the same thing, which led him to cause the first sin. And we've been paying for it ever since. The moment that Adam wrote that one rule, that one commandment, sin was introduced into this world. Adam lost his power or his dominion that was given to him to be, you know, to have dominion over this world. And it was given to Satan. The Bible says that Satan is the God of this world. This is how Satan became the God of this world. So when people say it's like, why do we have war? Why do we see all these wicked and evil things that takes place? Murders, school shootings, all these crazy things that takes place. The reason why is because we have to understand, or why does God allow all these things to happen? It's because of that one very thing, because of sin. Satan is the God of this world. He rules this world. This is, what I, this is why the Bible says we are not of this world, though we are in this world. Because God the God of this world, lower G, not big G, is Satan. And God gives us free will. That's the other part of it. He gives us free. So we're allowed to make our own decisions. Again, so that means we're allowed to sin. If we want to sin, we could go ahead and commit sin if, if we wanted to. And we all commit sin. We all do. I, I, I do. There's nobody that's perfect. The only person that was perfect to walk in this earth was Jesus Christ. He's the only one. Other than that, we all were born into sin. But the beauty of it is that because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, the blood that was shed, we have now the ability to go to Jesus and say, Jesus, please forgive me. We have the ability to go to Jesus like, I repent. I made a mistake. And what happens is because Jesus is our advocate, our sin becomes forgiven because what Satan wants to do. He's our adversary. So you have Jesus, who's our advocate, and Satan, who is our adversary. So which means that he's always, the Bible says that he is the adversary of the brethren, or, he, or basically he wants, he's the accuser of the brethren. I want to make sure I get that clear. So his job is to always to try to find fault and flaws on us and try to present that case to God. We see in the Bible, he did that with Job. Satan goes to God and says, hey, you see, Job, the only reason why, because Job worshiped God. He was a faithful servant to God. So Satan goes to God and said, hey, the only reason why Job is so faithful to you is because of all the blessings that you have given him. That's the only reason why. So you see, he's trying to make accusations, false accusations. And so God said, okay, let's put this to the test. You can do everything that you want, but you can't touch him. Basically, you can't kill him. We're going to put this to the test because God's like, I know he's still going to stay faithful to me. So Satan is like, all right, cool. And then we know the famous story where Job pretty much loses everything. He gets sick. He starts having, he has like a very bad skin disease. He loses his family. He loses all his wealth. He loses everything. Satan took everything away from him except his life. But Job stayed faithful to God. And then what did God do? God rewarded him. 
and he gained everything that he lost even more tenfold but satan's gonna try to manipulate our mind and to make it seems like god will never forgive you god doesn't love you god doesn't love this world look what happens but the reality is this again satan is the god of this world and so because we have free will this is why we see the things that are going on because you have you can make your own choice but god gives us the instructions which is through the word which is the bible on how to live our life and the proper way to live our life so we're not paying for the consequences of our sins again sin is expensive and is a debt that a lot of us cannot afford to pay the more we sin the more we stray away from the will of god see when we're under the will of god we're under god's protection right we're under god's protection it doesn't mean that Satan's not going to try to manipulate it doesn't mean that Satan's not going to try to hurt us because his job is to kill steal and destroy it doesn't mean that Satan's not going to try to come and try to devour us because he's going to try to do everything he can within his power to wheel us out of the will of god but we're but when we're under the will of god we're under god's protection we're under his mercy we're under his grace he is there for us satan cannot harm us he's going to try but he's not this victory when we're under the will of god but when we stray away from the will of god or we're not under the will of god this is where all the chaos and havoc happens this is when satan's going to start having his way how do we stay under the will of god by following his word living the life that he calls us to live having faith trusting in him that's how we stay under the will of god this is where the blessings and favor comes over our life because now we're not making decisions that reflect sin we're making decisions that is based on prosperity or based off of the guidance of the holy spirit things that's not going to harm us and that's really all it is sin is just there to harm us we don't realize it because things that could seem as innocent because the world does that again does an amazing job to make it seem that it's okay but we could see in real time without even reading the bible if we're honest we can see in real time where either people that we know or even people that we see who are celebrities or we see on TV that we see on social media, we see the life, the life that they're living that we thought was glamorous. We thought it was good. We thought it was cool. And we see what's happening. We're seeing that now Satan is ready to collect his debt. We're seeing it now that the life that they were living, that according to the Bible, was is deemed as sinful we're seeing the consequences that's come along with it consequences that they cannot choose because again you can't choose your consequences you can choose your sin which means you can choose the carnal life that you want to live if you commit this and, and let's let me make this one distinction because again we're all going to sin if i'm out one day and i happen to by accident say the S word, right? S H I T. Let's say I accidentally say it's like, ah, are we supposed to curse? No. Is God going to punish me just for that one curse? I mean, that one curse word? Probably not, especially if I go and repent afterwards. And, and that's what I normally do. Like, ah, man, my bad, God. God, please forgive me. I'm good. But a carnal life is living a sinful life, which means you are intentionally choosing to sin you're not doing it by mistake you're intentionally choosing to go the opposite direction of what god is telling you to do it's just like that gps the gps is telling you to go right because going right is going to save you time it's going to save you headaches you're going to avoid traffic car accidents everything and you're going to get to the destination that you need to go but you want to go left because you're so used to going left not realizing left is going to take you longer. It's going to delay you. You're going to run into some issues, car accident, whatever it is that may take place. And that's what happens. Like, nah, but I'm so used to going this way. 
Every time I go this way, I'm good. Nothing ever happens. But it can just be that one time. See, sin starts to pile up. And what happens, it's like a it's like a time clock. Eventually, when that clock runs out, and it's like, now it's time to pay up. And that's the part that we have to be careful of. Because again, sin is expensive. But the beauty of it is that though no matter how expensive sin is, Jesus Christ paid that debt. He paid that debt when he died on the cross. He paid that debt for us. So we shouldn't have to keep on making these same mistakes and wondering like, man, if I made this mistake, how am I going to clear this debt? Easy. You go to God, you ask for forgiveness. Jesus, forgive me. I repent because I don't, you know, you don't want to deal with the consequence that comes along with it. Now, God's going to have mercy over you. He's going to forgive you. It doesn't mean that, again, that you may not have to deal with the consequence that comes along with it, but at least you have mercy from God and you're able to deal with, if there are consequences from that sin, you can deal with it through the strength of God. And that's the part where I want to drive home in this conversation when it comes to sin, because sin is expensive. If you read the Bible, you can see many stories. Old Testament is is a pure example of it, where we see so many of even some of our favorite characters in the Bible, where they just make mistakes after mistakes, sin after sin. And sometimes it's not them paying for it. It's the gener- next generation that has to pay for it, the sins of the father. And that's the part that for me, it makes me think twice before I do something because like, man, I don't want the next generation that's under me to make that same mistake or have to pay for that mistake that I have made with, because it's unfair for my daughter for an example. And when she gets older and she has kids, if she decides to have kids to pay for the sins that I've committed. This is where a generational curse becomes. This is where a generational curse and why a generational curse exists because of what? The sins of the father or the sins of the one that came before. And they did nothing because of their ego, because of their pride, because shame, whatever reason why. Quite frankly, for me, it's selfishness. If we want to be very quite honest but it's because of those decisions again you can choose your sin but you cannot choose the consequences and we see it happen we see it happen so i want to encourage encourage those who are watching this video and i hope this video has been very helpful a little heavy than than normal but when i heard that phrase sin is expensive and that you can choose your sin but you cannot choose your consequences i knew that i wanted to do a video on this and, and I, I had posted a, a, a reel and for those who may not know you know you can follow me on instagram um i am kings of more that's my personal page and of course the words of wisdom podcast or actually it's a wild podcast um, I'll leave a link on below if you want to follow me. No pressure, no pressure at all. But but I had created a reel and just basically talked about it. And I was like, you know, even I did this reel, I still want to do an episode on it. Um, just to give a nice surface level, but a also a full level conversation regarding sin and understanding what sin is, what happens when we commit a sin but also how can we get ourselves out of it? Because sometimes we feel like we can't get out of it. We're stuck and like, man, I don't know. And you just have to start thinking like, hey, I'm not saying it's easy, but what I'm saying is this. One thing that I always say all the time, like I was having a conversation with my wife the other day where we were, I won't give the details because it's a kind of a personal conversation, not necessarily with me and her, but we're pertaining to somebody that we know. And, I basically stated is like, listen, it's either they want to make the change or not. 
these are the these are the these are the options that they have. And I, I laid out the three options. It's either they do A, B, or C. There, there's no other option outside of it. So they have to figure out how to make a decision that is going to not hinder their life. And that's what it comes down to. It's either you want to make the change or you don't. If you want to make the change, then you figure it out. We could we could make the excuse on why we can't do something, but when the minute when we want something, like anybody that I know who, let's say, wants a car, they're gonna find every way that they can to get a new car. You want a new job, you're gonna find every single every way that you can to get a new job. If you want a pair of Jordans, right? Jordan fours right now are Anytime for the Jordan 4s drop, like people go crazy for it. And people do everything that they can to get those Jordans. People make time and effort for the things that they want. But the things that they are comfortable sitting in sometimes, they will make excuses for. And act like there's no way. Which to me is it's saying playing with their mind. Again, their flesh. Satan's telling them lies because he's the father of lies. This is what he does. So he's going to come in your ear and he's going to fill your mind with lies and that what you're doing, the way you're living, the decision that you're making, it's all good or that you can't get out of it. This is just the way your life is going to be. You're never going to be successful. The sin that you're living in, it's normal. Who cares? This addiction that you're struggling with, there's no way you can get out of it. It's okay. It's not a big deal. Or because you already did it, God doesn't love you. He's not going to show favor over your life. He's not going to bless you. You're done. It's okay. It is what it is. He's going to fill your mind with lies. Lies. And we have to get accustomed to learning what the difference between Satan lies and God's truth. Satan lies and God's truth. God's truth is never there to harm you or confuse you. Satan lies is always there to harm you and destroy you. And so you have to know the difference. And the Holy Spirit is always there to give you the spirit of discernment. So you know what is of God and what is of Satan and what is of God is always going to be backed up, always going to be backed up by scripture. Satan's lies is always going to be backed up by what the world wants you to feel and think and deem that is okay. It's only going to get you in trouble. Again, you can choose your sin you can't choose your consequences. Why? Because sin is expensive. Sin is like a high interest loan that has been designed for you to stay in debt and not to be able to pay. But guess what? Again, like I said, Jesus is there to take care of that debt for you because you already paid that debt. You just got to go to him and say, God, it's like the, um, What's the Joe Biden, President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris just passed the um, the student loan forgiveness? That's what God is doing with your sin. He's canceling it out. Same doesn't want that happen, but he's canceling it out. You just got to go to him. Just like if you want your student loans um, forgiven, which I need to get mine forgiven as well. So I need to jump on that ASAP. You just got to go and Follow the instructions that requires you to get your student loans forgiven. Same thing with God. You just go to God, but it's, with God, it's much easier. You just go to God and ask for forgiveness no matter what it is. He is there to forgive. He's there to forgive. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, again, do me a favor. Leave a comment. Hit that like button. And sin is something that you may feel that will keep you in bondage, but God has the key to unlock that chain and ball, which is sin, 
or that sinful life that you're living and free you from it. Because the moment that Jesus Christ died, that was the exact reason why he did that. So you can be free from sin. Until the next episode, as always, one love.